If exactly the same information is presented or phrased in a different way, does it make any difference? Does it influence our behavior, our decisions? Today we learn about framing from the family of biases and fallacies. Welcome to the Soft Skill Channel. My name is Sebastian Jung and today I'd like to present the topic of framing. So what is framing? As the name suggests, it is about the frame information is presented in, how it is phrased, how it is presented. And that is an important aspect. You might recall the concept Viziati. What you see is all there is, from Daniel Kahneman's thinking fast and slow. Kahneman stated that we only consider the information that is on our mind at the moment, that is right before us, and that we usually ignore the fact that there might be other relevant information that is not at hand at the moment. And that is quite important in regard to framing. For example, different frames can evoke different emotions. And there is a nice experiment about that by Amos Tversky that he conducted at the Harvard Medical School. To the participants of the study, he provided material about lung cancer treatment. There are two main treatment options which is an operation and radiation. In the long run, the survival chance is much higher with an operation. However, since the operation itself is risky, there is a short-term risk. In the materials Tversky gave to his participants, this risk was presented in two different ways. Half the participants received a version that read The one month survival rate is 90%. The other half received materials that read There is 10% mortality in the first month. As you'll notice, uh, in fact, this is the identical information, however, it is presented differently. Once in a positive way, people survive. Once in a negative way, people die. And this had a lot of influence on the participants. When they were asked to decide which treatment option they would recommend, of those who had the survival rate phrasing, 84 recommended the operation, but only 50% of those who had the mortality phrasing. To my understanding, framing is not so much a bias or fallacy on its own, but it is more of a superordinate concept. A lot of different biases and fallacies can contribute to creating framing effects. In the example we discussed uh, previously with the lung cancer treatment, another important aspect is the matter of gains and losses. If people survive, we, uh, we would consider this a gain. If people die, we would consider this a loss. And this is an important difference because we have a strong aversion to losses. So, for example, if I would lose $50, the frustration about that would be greater, would be more intense than the happiness I would feel if I gained $50. This is also known to credit card companies. In discussions and negotiations about fees for paying by credit card, the credit card companies always tried to prevent fees for customers. However, they always had a fallback. They said, if there is to be a fee for paying by credit card, this should not be presented as a credit card surcharge, but as a cash discount. 
because they were clearly aware that customers would be way more willing to forgo a discount than to pay a surcharge. Another important aspect of this matter of gains and losses is that we treat them differently. If we expect a gain, we usually want to play it safe. But if we want to prevent a loss, we are willing to gamble, we are willing to take a risk. And this is shown uh, very well by a classic experiment by Kahneman and Tversky, the so-called Asian disease problem. It includes the following story. The US are preparing for the outbreak of an Asian disease that is expected to kill 600 people. There are two different programs that could be adopted to fight this disease. Program A will save 200 people. Program B provides a probability of one third that 600 people will be saved and a probability of two thirds that no one will be saved. Those of you who are good at math have probably already noticed that these two programs are basically identical because the one with the probabilities averages out to 200 people saved as well. So there isn't one program better than the other, but they are pretty much identical from a mathematical point of view. However, the participants of the study clearly favored program A, where 200 people would be saved for sure. But again, uh, there were two different versions, two different phrasings of the story. The first half of the participants received what I just explained, and the second half received a different framing. For them it read program A, 400 people will die. Program B, there is a one-third probability that no one will die and a two-third probability that all 600 people will die. The participants who received this version clearly favored program B. Because, as I said earlier, if it is about a gain, if it is about people saved, we want to play it safe, we don't want to gamble. But if it is about preventing a loss, about preventing people from dying, we are willing to take a risk. And this even applies if the distinction between gain and loss is not real, but is just uh, uh, based on the way the information is presented. Another phenomenon that can contribute to framing effects is the so-called mental accounting. There is a nice experiment by a cane man. Uh, again, we have a story that is presented to participants in two different versions. It is about uh, a woman who wants to visit the theater. The first half of participants received this story. The woman wanted to visit the theater, so she bought two tickets in advance at $80 each. However, when she arrived at the theater, she noticed, oh no, she had lost those tickets. Will she buy two more tickets and see the play, or will she return home without watching it? The other half of participants received this story. The woman wanted to see the play at the theater, so she went there and she wanted to buy two tickets. However, when she opened her purse, she noticed, oh no, she had lost the $160 she had brought to buy the tickets. But she also has a credit card, so she could use that to pay. And again, the question is, will she buy the two tickets or will she go home without seeing the play? And again, you'll obviously notice the situation is pretty much the same in both stories. It doesn't make a difference if you lose tickets worth $160 or $160 in cash. However, it made a lot of difference for the participants because those participants who had the story with the tickets lost mainly decided that the woman would probably go home without seeing the play, while those who had the version with the lost cash 
um, mostly decided that she, she would buy the tickets and see the play. Why is that? This is due to mental accounting, because in our mind we assign different amounts to money, to different areas, to different accounts in our minds. So what happened is basically those participants who had the tickets lost version, they thought, oh well, this woman has invested $160 into seeing this play and she would have to invest another 160 so she would end up with 320 dollars for this play and this is probably too much too expensive so she will probably go home without watching it those of you who've seen the video about the sunk cost fallacy will probably um, recognize it here and those participants who saw the version with the lost cash they thought, oh well, this woman is now $160 poorer than before. However, if she can afford to pay, uh, to pay $80 for a theater ticket, this probably won't affect her much. So obviously she will still buy the tickets and see the play. So as you see, mental accounting can influence our behavior and can lead to different decisions. Let's look at a final example. As I said earlier, Viziati is quite an important aspect. Uh, what you see is all there is. We only consider the information available at this moment, only that which is in our view, on our minds right now. And uh, the experiments that show this very well deal with joint evaluation versus single evaluation. There is a nice experiment by one Christopher C. from the University of Chicago. He handed the participants of his study secondhand music dictionaries and he asked them to evaluate them and to tell him how much money they would be willing to pay for them. Both uh, There were two dictionaries, Dictionary A and Dictionary B. Both had the same year of publication, 1993. Dictionary A was in great condition, like new. Dictionary B had a torn cover, but apart from that it was also in great condition, also like new. Dictionary A had 10,000 entries, Dictionary B had 20,000. Now, if participants were handed those uh, dictionaries independent of each other, separately, probably with other stuff in between, they were willing to pay more for Dictionary A, because it was in great condition, obviously. Um, while Dictionary B had this torn cover, they were not willing to give as much money for that. And the number of entries didn't mean anything to them without anything to compare them to. However, when they were asked to evaluate both dictionaries at the same time, it became apparent that Dictionary B had twice as many entries as Dictionary A, so obviously participants reversed their decision and now they were willing to pay more for Dictionary B. Now, this might seem trivial, but it is an important aspect of uh, how we make decisions. This matter of evaluating and comparing is quite important, as other examples from Kahneman's Thinking Fast and Slow show. For example, there is an experiment about charitable donations, where participants were presented with two different programs. One that was about saving dolphins by um, fighting the pollution of their breeding grounds. And the other was about protecting farm workers from skin cancer because they have increased risk of skin cancer. If those programs were evaluated uh, separately, participants would give more money to the dolphins. They were willing to donate more money to the dolphins because obviously dolphins are cute and you have a positive emotional reaction and you like them while farm workers are probably difficult to identify with if you are not one yourself and if you don't know any so they didn't give as much money to the farm workers however once both programs 
were evaluated at the same time. Again, the decision was reversed because people said, oh, well, it would be a bit strange to give more money to the animals than to the humans. And then they decided to give, to donate more for the farm workers. And it worked pretty much the same way in another experiment that was about punitive damages in civil cases. The participants were presented with two different civil cases and they were asked to decide how much money, how much punitive damage um, should be assigned in each case. In the first case, a child had suffered burns after his pajamas caught fire because the firm that uh, had made them had not made them uh, adequately fire resistant. In the other case, a bank had suffered um, heavy losses, $10 million to be precise, due to the unscrupulous uh, dealings of another bank. If those cases were evaluated separately, the participants would give much higher punitive damages to the bank because of this high loss of $10 million. $10 million. However, if both cases were evaluated at the same time, uh, participants would say, oh, well, obviously a child that has been hurt has to get a higher punitive damage than some financial stuff, and they would assign higher punitive damages to the child. So, as you see, this is quite an important aspect, and if we have to make decisions, we should always wonder, which aspects am I looking at right now? Do I have sufficient means of comparison? Do I maybe need some additional information here? Framing is, of course, present in our daily lives everywhere. Obviously in advertising. Uh, obviously the advantages of products are emphasized in advertising while the disadvantages are omitted. We are obviously aware of that. And pretty much the same applies to, for example, speeches of politicians. They will always present their own agendas in the best lights as possible. If they have some policy uh, that is about, let's say, fighting crime, uh, they won't likely mention that this might also mean a restriction of freedom, which doesn't sound as nice. Uh, and again, we are aware of that. We, we don't expect advertising to, to give us the whole unfiltered truth. But still, uh, the important point is we should be aware this is still effective. Uh, the fact that we are aware of it does not mean that we are immune to it. This framing will still influence our behavior and our decisions. If you click the like button, at least two people will be quite happy about it. Two humans, my girlfriend and myself. And if you also subscribe to the channel, this will be a considerable gain for everybody. We will see each other again next week. For today, I'll take my leave. Have a nice day. See you next time.